This is part 32 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is dependency injection and how it works in Angular. Let's understand this with an example. Here, we have a code snippet from our employee list component. This is the same component that we have been working with so far in this video series. This component displays list of employees as you can see right here. So this employee list component needs employees data. So instead of having that data access logic within our employee list component, we offloaded that responsibility to employee service. So later, if we need this employee data within another component, instead of repeating that logic, we can simply reuse this employee service. Now, to be able to use this employee service within our employee list component, we need an instance of this service. So we can use that instance to call getEmployees method of the service, which returns us the list of all employees. But if you look at the piece of code that we have right here, we are not creating an instance of this employee service anywhere. All we are doing here is created a private variable of type employee service, and then the constructor also has a parameter of type employee service. We are then initializing the class private field with the constructor parameter. We are then using that private field as an instance to call the getEmployees method of the service. We are not using the new keyword anywhere here to create an instance of this employee service. So naturally, the obvious question that we get to our mind at this point is, how are we getting an instance of this employee service? Now, one thing we can be sure is this employee list component itself is not creating an instance of this employee service. By looking at this code, what we can understand is this constructor is being provided with an employee service instance and then we're using that instance to assign this private field and then we are using the private field to call the get employees method. We know when an instance of this employee list component is created, its constructor gets called. So into the constructor, someone is creating and injecting an instance of the employee service. And then that instance is being used to assign this private field. And then we are using the private field as an instance to call the get employees method of the service. So the obvious question that we get at this point is, who is creating and providing that instance to the constructor of our employee list component? The answer is the Angular injector. When an instance of this employee list component is created, the Angular injector creates an instance of employee service and injects that into the constructor. And within the constructor, we are then assigning that injected instance to this private field. And then we are using the private field to call the service. So the next natural obvious question that we get at this point is, how does the Angular injector know about our employee service? Now, before we answer that question, we have a shorthand syntax for these three lines of code. So whatever these three lines of code is doing, we can achieve exactly the same thing using this one line right here. We discussed this shorthand syntax in our previous videos as well. So on this slide right here, we have the Angular injector, which creates and injects the service. And here is the component that needs the service instance. Now, the question that remains unanswered is, how does this Angular injector know about our employee service? Now, to tell the Angular injector about our employee service, we need to register our service with the Angular injector. To register the service with our Angular injector, we either use provider's property of ng module decorator or component decorator. So this means we can register a service with the Angular injector at a component level or at a module level. What is the difference between the two? We'll discuss that in our upcoming videos. For now, let's understand that to register a service with an Angular injector, we can either use the provider's property of ng module decorator or component decorator. Now let's quickly recap what we have discussed so far. Here is our employee list component and we know this component has a dependency on employee service. So the component specifies its dependency by using a constructor parameter like this. The Angular injector now will look at its constructor and says, all right, you have a dependency on employee service. So let me create an instance of that dependency and inject into your constructor. But wait a minute, before the Angular injector can create an instance of the service and inject it into the component, the Angular injector needs to know about the service. 
Now we tell the Angular injector about our service by registering our service with the Angular injector using the provider's property of ng module decorator or component decorator. Here is that same piece of code. Notice within our employee list component we have a constructor and the constructor specifies it has a dependency on employee service. Now the Angular injector is going to create an instance of employee service and inject it into this employee list component constructor whenever an instance of this employee list component is created. But for the Angular injector to be able to inject an instance of employee service, it needs to know about our employee service. That means we will have to register our employee service with the Angular injector. And we are doing that using the provider's property of ng module decorator. So we see the list of employees as expected. But let's comment this provider's property. Now if we comment this, the Angular injector does not know about our employee service. So it will not be able to create an instance and inject that into our employee list component. Let's look at the error message that we get. Let me reload the page. Notice we don't see anything on the web page. Let's launch browser developer tools and look at the error message. Look at what the error says no provider for employee service and it is an injection error. So basically the Angular injector is complaining that you said you have a dependency on employee service but I don't know anything about this employee service. Let me know what this employee service is and I can inject an instance of that dependency when required. And to tell the Angular injector about our employee service we use the provider's property. Now, if we get this right, as far as dependency injection in Angular is concerned, there are two simple and straightforward steps. Specify a dependency using the constructor parameter like this, and then register that dependency with the Angular injector using the provider's property. It's that simple. So, what is dependency injection? It's a very common coding pattern in which a class receives its dependencies from an external source rather than creating them itself. So if we relate this definition to our example, in our case this component needs an instance of this employee service. Instead of the component creating an instance of this employee service, it is receiving that instance from an external source, in our case the Angular injector. At this point, we still have several questions unanswered like why should we use dependency injection? What benefits does it provide? Why can't we directly create an instance of this employee service class within our employee list component using the new keyword and then use that instance instead of using dependency injection? We'll answer all these questions in our next video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.